Oh my god. Come on, Rimu! She's dead, right? <laughs> He's so damn good, dude. What's going on, y'all? And welcome on in. Today, let's talk about all things Rimuru, the slime that just came out. Guys, I'll just say right off the bat, he is crazy good. I know I say that about a lot of heroes, but I really, re I really, really think that he's one of the heroes that most of y'all watching, 90% of y'all, can get good use out of. He just... We'll go over all the things that why he what makes him great, why I really think he's gonna shine right now, and why I think a lot of y'all can uh, just right out of the box have him perform really well for all types of players. Um, let's cover things like let's see what did I write above here? Mulligora priority, equipment and builds, and overall strategy. Where I'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses. I'll tell you the kind of stuff we tested today. But before we start, you guys know the drill. Let me know how your summons go in the comments below. I always like to hear from y'all. Our summons though, guys, I got him in 20 summons. The first 10 was a blank, second 20, I got him. And you know my recommendations for all y'all, if you ever get Rimu or any limited hero summon early and the artifact is kind of, we're not sure if we want to like max it, if it's not like a Guiding Light or a Rengar's Drink, for example, that kind of power level, maybe even like Draco Plate here. This one, Rimu's Mask, um, I'll put a picture up, but yeah, Rimuru's anti-magic mask. It could be pretty good for him if you don't mind the RNG aspect, but you do kind of want to have it max level. And if you weren't worried about max leveling it, because it's going to be pretty hard to, to max limit break you guys, just go ahead and go with uh, Draco Plate, and I'll cover some other alternate solutions as well. But his artifact, basically what I wanted to tell y'all is if you get Rimuru, some, Rimuru or his artifact early, just go for one copy of each, and then I would really recommend save the rest of your bookmarks for Milim, Who's coming next week and then if you have extra bookmarks you can decide if you want to go for more artifacts for Rimuru and the um, anti-magic mask or if you want to get more copies of Milim and her artifact right but just go ahead and wait because he's here for two weeks anyways let's go ahead and start talking about his skills and then we'll cover the Molagora priority and hopefully I had like a nice montage intro because we played a lot of RTE games today guys all at Emperor or above so all the matches I played were against some of the best players uh, currently in RTA, so he definitely felt like he performed well in all of them, but we'll touch more on that in a little bit. Let's talk about his skill set. So, in terms of Molagora priority, first let's cover his skills real fast. Skill 3, we kind of covered this in the first impression video, so I don't got to go in as in depth, but there's a lot of things that surprised me about his build. I think when we looked at his, when Smilegate unveiled his skills, obviously he was really good, right? There's a lot to his kit, but there's some things that kind of just... Until you use them, we didn't. It was hard to tell how good he would really be. And guys, he's very good. The unaffected by ele elemental disadvantage, combined with how easy it is to get the ten thousand fixed damage, because I believe it's eight buffs total, and that's very easy to manage when you consider that he's gonna get. He's he copies two buffs from the skill two, um, for his team, right? Uh, it's very easy. You will almost always hit the 10,000 da fixed damage. It feels like every time I landed the skill, it almost always did the 10,000 fixed, unless there was a, a weird occurrence or if you were bringing your own strip or uh, they stripped you, whatever it is. If there was less buffs on the field, sometimes it would happen, but most of the time we get the 10,000 fixed damage. The unaffected by elemental disadvantage means we can even hit fire units. And then on top of that, guys, his multipliers are good. If, you weren't, if you're not really sure what multipliers means, it's just like an additional way that units scale with uh, skill damage. And it's like separate from like the attack or HP scaling that is along with units, right? And his his scaling, just understand he gets a lot of damage compared to other other types of characters. Um, if y'all really want the data, I can I can scrounge it up, but I don't really care about the numbers too much. Just understand compared to a lot of other characters, it's good scaling. So this skill three hit surprisingly hard. Uh, I was hitting units for. Uh, even tank your units for like seven, eight thousand. Then you combine the ten thousand fix. We're hitting eighteen thousand, and I'm not even on a damage build, guys. I'll tell you all about the stats here in a second. Um, but yeah, if you want to dedicate some damage with pen set, uh, get even more attack. You could definitely one shot some units here and there. The skill two, though, of course, um, this is what gets the. This is what copies the buffs, and this is what kind of makes him always good, even if he gets focused down early. That's why immunity is nice. It's not necessary, but. Um, Right, the 30% combat readiness push, the counter attack skill. It's not really a counter, but you know, he attacks after getting hit, him or his allies, if there were just buffs present. And then, of course, the copy two buffs. And then the skill one is just nice to have. It's kind of a filler skill, but the random buff, uh, not bad if he gets something good. Now, overall, the high multipliers, the ignore elemental disadvantage, and then the copying buffs, meaning like we were stealing greater attack buffs, or not stealing, we were copying greater attack buffs, guys. We were copying immunities, sometimes defense ups, whatever it was. He just always got value for his team. 
A lot of times with immunity means he got at least one skill three off, which sometimes it was good. Sometimes it was not good. But in many scenarios, he did enough damage that I was able to clean up. And other times he just almost one shot the unit by himself. And other times that skill three was our closer, meaning they killed my other priority targets first, like Landy or Apocalypse Ravi. And he was able to close up the match because this cycled back and we even hit like Fire Charlottes for 17,000, 18,000 more in front and late frenzy which means he's killing anything right so not only is he good early he's good late this the gear requirements isn't that bad but we'll get more to that in a second so overall let's wrap up the skill talk um Molagora priority guys he is a plus 15 candidate i know a lot of y'all are really strapped for molas so if you're super strapped for molas just know that you will want a plus 15 him eventually uh go for minus one turn cooldown on the skill three first probably just skip anything in skill two because it is nice it hits really hard too guys it's really hard all his skills hit pretty hard but this one hits really hard after the skill three and uh but since we only happen we only get this proc once per three turns we could probably skip any molas in it skill one you want to get first i would say um just preference because we're gonna be hitting this more often if we're not soul burning the skill three this is our filler skill um so yeah minus one turn cooldown here maybe put a few into skill one and then if you have extra molas guys get the cheap ones Right, I always recommend getting the cheap ones, like uh, the one the one cost each, and then of course, I think first thing though, maximize the skill three, especially if you're going for that higher damage build with like a penetration set, higher speed, because you can one shot Apocalypse Robbies, one shot Amelia's, a lot of things. If they're not running with like some kind of mega tank like Crimson Armin or Fallen Cecilia, boys, you will be one shotting units if you wanted to. All right, so let's move on from the uh, skill talk and let's go ahead and cover the gearing. So, if you can see here, guys, I kind of just slapped together some spare gear that was lying around. I didn't take any of my best gear from other units, and he still held up at Emperor Plus in real-time arena. Now, a lot of y'all may not be able to get these exact stats, but I promise, I know a lot of y'all watching like, oh, I can hit those. It's not that bad, really. The defense and health aren't super high. The attack is just mediocre. Speed is there on speed set. That's not that bad to reach. 100 crit, right? That might be the hardest part for some of y'all, but the 250 crit damage is also. It's all kind of just like just enough. So we wanted a well all-rounded build. You guys watching, you can specialize if you want. I keep talking about the one shot. If you want to go for one shot, try to go for pen set instead of immunity. Maybe favor more attack. Try to keep your speed up though. Remember guys, if you don't have immunity, he can get interrupted. Um, so try to get your speed up, go pen set, get more attack. I like this all-rounder build though, because we're not all we're not as all in, but if you play hyper aggressive, right, pen set is good. Immunity set I just like because it's safe. But in the beginning, guys, if you just want to start running him out of the box, like right now. Even put him on crit set. There will be a few scenarios where the immunity, he'll get stunned or something. But um, it's okay. Just put him on whatever you have. Make sure he doesn't die to a stiff breeze. So give him some kind of bruiser stats, right? A decent amount of bulk. Make sure I would say like 3k plus attack at least. 250 plus crit damage. On speed set, if you can get to like around 200. Just get him some kind of stats overall for a bruiser. And I promise he will perform for you, okay? Now then you start to invest more mola, start to invest more gear. And he'll do better and better. But overall... Recap, you can go pen set for hyper aggressive, immunity set to be like an all-rounder, and crit set as budget, it's fine. Uh, speed is good, I bet you some people can are going to test maybe counter or lifesteal, but I really think he doesn't need any of that, at least right now. I think he does get, the speed set is very good, because you do want him to cycle skill 3s, and we do want him relatively going early, with the skill 3 especially, so that we can copy some good buffs like immunity, like I mentioned, um, and then one time I was even stealing gabs. Greater attack buffs from Arby's or Rans, right? The speed is good too. So I would really recommend speed set for now. But if y'all are testing any kind of wonky counter set builds, let me know how it works out. All right. As for artifacts, I think there's a few choices. I think Draco Plate will be the safest one for a lot of y'all. It just always provides good amount of crit damage and it'll give him that much needed survivability because a lot of times we will want some damage here. Like I sacked, I could have gotten him like 15k, 15k health, a little more defense in exchange for like attack. But I like the offensive build. Like I mentioned, this skill three has good multipliers we're going to be hitting with the 10k fixed like 17 18k a lot of time 15 to 18,000 not even on a damage build so i like having enough offensive capabilities and the draco plate does both offensive and defensive capabilities now if you don't have that i'll put it on the screen but we can do artifacts like Ephine's artifact merciless glutton if you want to go for a more hyper aggressive with 85 crit and like penetration set we can go for rem's artifact um we can also try um Crimson Seed, there's, I think for a lot of different scenarios, you can kind of do whatever you want. The artifact is less important. You can run his own artifact. Just remember what I said earlier, guys. If it's not max limit broken, maybe hold off on it because there is an RNG element to it. Um, even if it was 100%, you may get the wrong buff at the wrong time. But I'm sure it'll be fine too. Just overall, I think Draco Plate is probably the safest. And from there, kind of just pick your preference, okay? I would really recommend this though. 
But uh, there's a lot of great war warrior artifacts. I, I'm even sure Durandal. Let me know what you guys are testing out. But for now, just try Draco Plate if you have it. If you don't, um, yeah, Merciless Glen, uh, Rem's Artifact. I'll put them up on the screen and then... I think, I haven't tested it personally, but I'm sure Durandal would be fine. I'm sure some people are going to do High Attack, Uberius Tooth. Um, you could even do Sigurd Scythe if you wanted to do a more tanky. Maybe you were trying Counter. Sigurd Scythe might be fine as well. But overall, I think almost anything works, okay? Um, that being said, last recap. I think everyone can make great use of him. The only time you would maybe hold off is if you really like Melem more. In which case, you just wanted to see... Because I know some of y'all watching, it's been a tough time with bookmarks, right guys? Um, so maybe you wanted, maybe Milim's just more of your favorite and you're going to try to get him after Milim comes out. But if you just like, if you like him at all and you just want a solid unit, guys, he is so dang fun because of the copy buff mechanic. The fact that his skill three, we don't have to worry about elements as much. It does 10,000 fixed damage on top of whatever his good multipliers give him. He's just a fun, fun unit, guys. Seeing him pop off with a skill two whenever he, anytime anyone on your team gets hit, not just him. He's just a really, really solid unit that I think he'll help a lot of you guys out. Okay, so just if I can end the video with one thing, do not miss out on him. Make sure you get him. Give him a nice bruiser build. Remember what I mentioned about aggressive, safer, whatever kind of build. Just make sure he has an all-rounder bruiser build. Artifact, almost anything will work. But try for Draco Plate if you have it, okay? Anyways, guys, I'll do more testing tomorrow. But he's already performing extremely well. I was climbing an Emperor, boys. First picking him, even when it doesn't look that great. He's the real deal. I think all y'all should get him, okay? Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments below. Appreciate every single one of you. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.